So today we're going to be talking about one of the most important, if not the most important tool in Lightroom and that is the Tone Curve. Right from controlling the highlights, shadows and midtones to some advanced cross-processing, it's a beast and you'll be blown away to know that you can click on the face, drag it up to make it brighter, click on the hair, drag it down to make it darker, yes, and click on the background, drag it up or down to make it dark or bright. There's so much more to learn, so much more to show and so much more to know, so without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Lightroom and let's jump straight into the fun stuff. So this is a completely unretouched photo, but just to be sure, just click on the reset again. It's completely unretouched. Now here's the fun part. But before that, let's make sure that we are in the tone curve, okay? So click on the develop module, make sure in the develop module, and then just under the basic one, you have the tone curve. Basic tab, then we have the tone curve. So if you cannot see it that way, so this is the basic tab. Click here to close it down, and then we have the Tone curve. So the fun part is this, visual editing. Look at this icon, look at this circle icon. Little small icon there, ignored, click on that icon. You wanna make the background a little brighter? Click and drag it up. You wanna make this a little darker? Click and drag it down. You wanna make parts of her dress a little darker? Click and drag it down, there we go. You wanna make this part a little more darker? There we go. You wanna make her skin a little brighter? Click and drag it up click and drag it up. There we go. So quickly we have adjusted the highlights, shadows and midtones. Have a look. This is the before, this is the after. So quickly. So visual editing is the key. Now, when you are doing this, make sure that you are in this curve which has sliders, not in this curve which doesn't have any sliders. I'll tell you why later, okay? You can also do this using these sliders. But then again, I just had to show you this because this is very easy to do and it's also very visual. Now let's move to this manual curve, okay? Let's reset everything. Let's move to this manual curve. So in this curve, you can click anywhere and drag and adjust it yourself and you don't have the sliders. Now here's the key. You get two curves. Just double click to remove the point. You get two curves. Whatever you do here, Okay, for example, you did this, you did this, you did a bunch of stuff here. And once you switch to this curve, to switch to the other curve, click on this. This curve is independent of that curve. That if you do anything, the changes that you made in that curve stays put. So this is independent of that. So you get two curves in Lightroom. Isn't that fun? So let's go ahead and reset that. Double click on the point curve to reset this. Okay. Let's come back to this curve. Now, in this curve too, you can drag and make points, but then again, you don't get multiple points here, unlike this one. You can create as many points as you want, and you can drag it down, drag it up, drag it down, you can do a bunch of other stuff. So, let's go ahead and reset it again. The reason why I asked you not to do visual editing in this curve is this. If I click this, and if I make it a little brighter, make this a little darker, make it a little brighter again, make it a little brighter, watch what happened. It just ruins the photo. Whenever there is a uncanny wave, it just ruins the photo. But, let's reset that, but this curve, doesn't let that happen. There can never be an uncanny strange wave here, no matter what you do, watch. No matter what you do, there can never be that strange wave which ruins the photo, okay? So let's go ahead and reset that. Now before we move on to the advanced stuff, we need to understand what tone curve is and what actually it represents, okay? So let's move on to the manual curve. So let's click on this, moves on to the manual curve. Now, on the X axis, Listen to this carefully. On the X axis or the horizontal axis, we have the target. On the horizontal axis, we have the target. Number one, remember, on the horizontal axis, we have the target. On the vertical axis, number two, remember, vertical axis, we have the result. Okay, so this is the vertical axis, we have the result. We also call it Y axis. Now, on the left hand side, we have darker pixels. On the right hand side, we have brighter pixels. So as you move from left to right, you move from dark to bright pixels. Okay. Similar way, downwards we have dark, upwards we have bright for 
this axis for the y axis and for the vertical axis. Okay, now, what if you want to make a bright area of pixels more brighter? Okay, so first you look in the target axis. Where do I have the bright pixels? On the right hand side? We have the bright pixels on the right? Okay, so you will click a point here and you want to make it more brighter, which is the result. So this is the result axis and to make it brighter, what do we do? We take it up because as we go up, we have brighter pixels. As we go down, we have darker pixels. So we take it up. So what am I doing? I'm making the brighter pixels more brighter. Now what if you want to make the darker pixels more darker? So you would watch the target axis or the X axis or the horizontal axis and then where are the dark pixels? They are here, right? So you click here. You want to make it darker. So look at the result axis or the Y axis. To make it darker, we take it down. So we take it a little down. There we go. This has increased the contrast and that's what contrast is. Making brighter more bright, making darker more dark. Now what is this faint thing? Let's reset that. What is this faint thing going on? This is nothing but a representation of the number of pixels. Number of dark pixels, number of bright pixels. On the X axis or the horizontal axis, we have the brightness level. Okay, for this brightness level, how many pixels? For this brightness level, how many pixels? And on the Y axis or the vertical axis, we have the number of pixels. So for this brightness level, we have this many pixels. For this brightness level, we have this many pixels. For this brightness level, we have very little pixels. As you can see, there are very little highlights in the photo. So we have very less pixels here. And as you can see, since we have a ton of gray in the background and it's closer to neutral, have a look. What do we have close to neutral? A peak, right? So we have a lot of little neutral pixels here because of the background. So that's how it works. On the X axis, we have the target. On the Y axis, we have the result. Now some of you guys might ask, which is a very valid question. Why is the tone curve diagonal? Why isn't it a straight line like a dead man on an ECG so that we can adjust that and make him alive? It is because the answer is in the question. What did I say? The more right you go, the brighter the pixels are. The left you go, the darker the pixels are. Now, watch this. The brightest pixel cannot get any brighter. Why? Because it is the brightest, right? It's the brightest. The brightest pixel cannot get any brighter. It has a roof. It can only go darker and the darkest pixel cannot get any darker. Why? Because it has a base. And the difference between the roof and the base is what? the dynamic range of the image. And that's the plain reason why the tone curve is diagonal. So that the brightest pixel doesn't get any brighter and the darkest pixel doesn't get any darker. Now let's talk about some cross-processing. Now instead of talking about it, let me show that to you, okay? So besides RGB, beside the combined RGB, you also have red, greens and blues. Now this opens up a plethora of options for you. For example, let's go ahead and just adjust the contrast just a little bit, simply, like so, okay? Before, after, just simple stuff. And let's move to, say, channel reds. And let's increase the intensity of the red for the brighter pixels, okay? And make it dark on the shadows. Now what is it doing? Just a quick recap. On the right hand side we have the brighter pixels, on the left hand side we have the darker pixels. And this is the channel for red. So this shows the graph for red pixels. Brighter red pixels, darker red pixels, okay? So make it a little brighter, make it a little darker. There we go, have a look. Have a look. Now let's move back to blue and let's increase the blues and the shadows just a little bit, just a hair. Let's try greens, try decreasing greens just a little bit. No, it doesn't look good here. Maybe look good in the highlights. Nope. Look good in the shadows. No, doesn't look fancy. Yeah, this looks good. Just a little bit of green in the shadows. Have a look at the before and after. So this is the before, this is the after. We have done a little bit of cross processing. Now what if you want to add a faded effect? Now here comes the fun part of having two curves. Now in faded images, what do we have? In shadows, we have no details, but the shadows are bright. 
So how do we make it? First, remove the details from the shadows. Let's go ahead and reset that. To remove the details from the shadows, we'll click here again and come back to the normal curve. So we'll take the shadows all the way down and we are removing details from the shadows, right? So you can also do this using this curve. You can pull it down. We have removed the details. Now let's come back to the second curve. In the second curve, increase the shadows, watch. Right now we are doing it with green. You can do this with RGB. There we go. We have the faded effect. We have no details in the shadows, but the shadows are bright. Watch, right? Isn't that interesting? Also, you can add colors to it. Maybe blue. Blue is in fashion. It's just like Instagram, right? This is what we do in Instagram. You can take it down, make a curve like that. Isn't that interesting? Also, let me show you one more interesting stuff. When we did that cross processing, one interesting thing about that is this. You can make it black and white, right? You can go to the basic panel and you can edit it even more. You can increase the clarity. You can take the saturation all the way to minus 100. You can still edit everything. Highlight shadows, maybe in the basic panel, wherever it is. Blacks, whatever it is, you can still edit that besides having this. So it's a fun thing to know. Okay, so let's move back to the normal curve. So here's a quick recap. There's a lot of things that you can do with it. Highlights, shadows, midtones, contrast, a lot of things with this one. So whatever adjustments that you have to do, okay, with this, make sure you do this in this curve because this curve never goes wrong. But if you're a little bit of professional and advanced with the second one, use the second one. Now here's another thing about the basic tone curve. We did talk about this. The more to the right you go, the brighter the pixels you have, the more to the left you go, the darker the pixels you have. So they have divided those areas into four sections. Highlights, lights, darks and shadows and even in the graph, have a look. These are the areas and even when you hover over it, just look at the text here. We are in the highlight sections, it shows the highlights. We are in the light sections, we are in the dark sections and we are in the shadow sections. And whenever you play with the sliders, you can even change the area which it is affecting. For example, you are playing with the darks, you might want to decrease the darks and you can even play with these stuff and to figure out which one looks good. Okay, so I'm moving the darks here. So if this is low, I can move it here and there to see which one fits best. So that's a little bit of customization there. Hope that's useful. So let's go ahead and reset our image. And before we wrap up, let me show you a couple of other things which might be useful to you. So reset and there are a couple of presets. So you can click here. There's a medium contrast preset and there's a strong contrast preset. So if you're on the go, you don't have much time, you can use these presets to ease up your process. So that pretty much wraps up the tone curve in Lightroom. Just a quick recap and just a few precautions. Number one, you can visually edit your photos in the tone curve. You can just click on that icon, make parts of the image brighter, make parts of the image darker just by clicking and dragging. But here's what you need to keep in mind. Use the regular, the basic, the non-manual curve for this one. Because if you use the other one and if the curves goes a little bit uncanny, a little bit strange, the image will be destroyed. Use the regular curve for that. Okay. Then you have the sliders, the highlights, the lights, the darks and the shadows. Okay. You can adjust where these sliders affect the curve using those sliders in the curve. You can also click and drag to affect those sliders and you can even use those sliders. Then comes the manual curve. In the manual curve, the righter you go, the brighter the pixels, the left you go, the darker the pixels, the up you go, the brighter the pixels, the down you go, the darker the pixels. On the X axis, we have what? We have the target. On the Y axis, we have the result. So if you want to make a brighter pixel more brighter, you'll click on the right, drag it up. If you want to make darker pixels more darker, you click on the left, drag it down. If you want to make a brighter pixels darker, what do you do? You'll click on the right, drag it down. What if you want to make the midtones a little darker? Click in the middle, drag it down. Now talking about cross processing, besides this combined RGB channel, you can even select individual channels in the manual curve. You can, for example, you selected red, you can increase the value of red in the highlights, decrease the value of red from the shadows, or you can increase the value of reds from the shadows and decrease it in the highlights. There's green, there's blues. And that's how you pretty much make your image interesting. So I hope this video helped you. And if it did, make sure to give us a like. And if you love the video, don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Click on the bell button so that you, my friend, don't miss anything. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. Because you and I, we were created.
created to love, created to love. We've got one chance to make a change.